Welcome to today's video where we will be discussing Diamondback, creating the bridge between crypto and fiat currency. The DBK stablecoin for everybody, every day, everywhere. I'm going to be your host, Michael, from the cryptocurrency YouTube channel, Kubera. We're going to create a long format educational video about Diamondback DBK. So for the viewers out there who might not have as much time, but they're still interested in this project, this social experiment, we're going to break this video up into smaller segments so i guess you could call them chapters if you will we are going to discuss about what is dbk that would be the first chapter the next chapter would be the trust model and the trust partners the third chapter will be about the team who makes it up the service providers who are the advisors for diamondback and included in all of that the partners the fourth chapter would include the roadmap and the advantages of using a stable coin and the fifth chapter would provide a white paper outline or at least the most important aspects of it. Finally, for Diamondback and the website, we discuss about the news, press releases, and social media. There's currently a Discord and Telegram group that you're able to join at any time. If you have any questions, someone will be able to help you out. After we've painted the whole picture for you, we can discuss about an educational portion to all of this. So when you purchase your DBK, you'd also receive educational content for free. And a quick note, all of the links used in this video will be down in the description below. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to reduce myself here, share my screen, and let's go through it. We are on the website diamondback.io currently. The first thing you see is this, creating the bridge between crypto and fiat. We're going to go into that, what that means. But first, you can see you're able to purchase it with a credit card and you're able to purchase with cryptocurrency, with Bitcoin and Litecoin through ICO Premier over here. And if you do the credit card option, then you're redirected to this website, which we will discuss at the end of this video, at the epilogue, after all the chapters are done, a Diamondback education starter pack that has free educational content and the $50 here would be for $50 worth of diamond back. So we're going to get back to that. So what does this mean? There's two interpretations. One is very literal. You're exchanging your legal government tender, your fiat currency, the dollars, the yen, euro for diamond backs, a digital currency. The other way you could interpret it is Diamondback is designed to be a safe, secure way for non-crypto enthusiasts to suddenly dip their toes into cryptocurrency. DBK focuses more on digital currency than the cryptography aspects of cryptocurrency, but it's a safe and secure and insured way. As long as you register, then yes, you'll get insurance for it. For someone who's never dealt with cryptocurrencies before, there's an inherent problem with cryptocurrencies, at least what most non-crypto people when they hear it in the news, they associate it with volatility. They hear about Bitcoin's rising prices or even its falls. They hear about these cycles. To people within the crypto space, it is perfectly normal. And if you know what you're doing, whether you're a developer, you're an investor, you're a worker who's getting paid in cryptocurrency, you're a business, there's thousands of use models for cryptocurrencies, but you have to understand how to deal with that volatility. With a stable coin, you don't have to worry about volatility. Now, stable coin won't be like other cryptocurrencies where people are looking to invest with. But if you hold your money in something like the US dollar, where the Fed recently announced that it'll raise the inflation rate from 2% to 4% due to the trillions of dollars that were handed out in the stimulus packages. And if you look back at the US dollar's history, you see a long history of inflation. There's a lot of people who are looking for commodities, for assets where they're able to park their money in. If you stuff your money under a mattress or give it to the bank, you are going to lose your money over time. You are losing purchase purchasing power. So what is a DBK coin? It's a trustworthy, stable digital payment solution. We are going to delve into the trust model, so we're not going to discuss that just yet. So Diamondback is not innovating anything on the blockchain. It's just giving a unique product using blockchain technology. The reason for the centralized token is it makes life a little bit easier when dealing with exchanges. It will be in the future on Tron's blockchain and Binance chain and several others. DBK is definitely thinking about the businesses out there because there's there's a lot of businesses that would like to transact with Bitcoin, but due to the volatility of the prices, a product or service that they sell that's $10,000, well, if it's a bad market cycle, suddenly that $10,000 could degrade down to $9,500. Any normal business would get really upset about losing their profit margins just due to volatility. With stable coins, you do not have that issue. Now, don't get me wrong, Bitcoin is a great store of value. It's an investment
that for some, there's some cryptocurrencies that have created enormous profits for a large amount of people out there. But for the average business that's using cryptocurrency, that's just not going to happen. Unless they're converting to fiat currency immediately, what they really need is a stable coin. And you can always move from a stable coin straight to any altcoin or a Bitcoin. The main goal of this is to create something that has real world value that's available globally in digital and in physical marketplaces. And regardless of socioeconomic status, everyone is able to use this. It doesn't matter if you're poor, if you're rich, it doesn't matter if you're based in India or in Japan or in America or in Netherlands. Anywhere, any day, anyone is able to use this. DBK coin is representation of value via the immutable blockchain, a real stable coin for real people. It's the new version of sound money, having intrinsic value based on the fiat or crypto value used to purchase it. It's easy to use, easy to adapt that's what gets a lot of people and this was quite popular a few years ago where it was very difficult for the average user who's never dealt with this stuff before to try and purchase bitcoin once you got the hang of it it got easier and easier as you went along the more transactions you did the simpler it seemed but there needs to be digital currencies out there that are really easy to use from the get-go so dbk provides that perfect bridge between the fiat and the crypto world a nice off-ramp so sound money a lot of people think gold gold is a great great store of value. It has also gone up. There was a lot of naysayers who said that gold was a better investment than Bitcoin was. During the short term periods, if you compared specific periods against one another, then yes, gold in certain periods was doing better than Bitcoin was. But in the long run, Bitcoin performed better than gold did. Now, should you diversify and have a little bit of gold and a little bit of Bitcoin, and a little bit of the stable coins and a little bit of this and that, the more money you have, the more you're able to diversify, depending on how safe or risky you want to be. The US dollar used to be backed by gold, but then there was uh, the Bretton Woods system enacted. And ever since then, the US dollar's inflation really started to go up. So currency, digital currency could be backed by gold, but it could also be backed by silver or by diamonds. And was backed by something, it helps to protect against inflation. Now, there is a specific model with diamond back, not pegged to the US dollar, which it's just going to cause unknown circumstances to just suddenly come up in the future. There are problems with the current money system that's in place today. So why are rare dollars? diamonds real assets they have intrinsic value they're easy to store and transfer now you're not actually going to have the diamonds especially since these are higher quality diamonds so it's kind of going to be like a pool where you own something that's backed by the diamond that's stored away safely these diamonds are actual tradable commodities and exceptionally rare diamonds in the past have gone up in value so here's a question that might come up why wouldn't people use other stable coins what about tether it's one of the highest valued stable coins and one of the highest valued cryptocurrencies out there currently. Well, Tether's had its fair share of controversy. The main problem with Tether is it's pegged to the US dollar. It's not a foolproof system, but there are benefits to the fiat currency system, to fractional reserve banking. Times the rapid growth of the economy was thanks to that, to innovations within the banking systems. It's allowed for the infrastructure to grow. Diamondbacks are inflation proof. What does that mean? If you bought the same amount of diamondbacks, 500 dollars 50 years ago that 500 dollars would be still here today if you had that in fiat currency well 500 dollars you could have purchased quite a bit people are always quite shocked to hear that the boomer age was able to buy houses for fifty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars and suddenly they're selling them for five hundred thousand or nine hundred thousand one of the greatest traders in the world warren buffett house in 1936 was worth 150 thousand dollars 2017 it was listed up for sale for 11 million dollars in omaha nebraska You've got crazier examples in New York and California, but it just goes to show that the US dollar value constantly is if you have a diamond backed asset that's stable, stable coins, the price just remains the same that it is. So the US dollar's inflation is going up, but also these very rare diamonds price is going up as well. Inflation going up is not that great. Your purchasing power goes down. And even in times of market crashes, the super, super rich are buying these diamonds. These are crazy diamonds that most people have never seen in their lives before. These are not the ones that you get on your diamond ring for most people. They're like art or the McLaren F1 where it just goes up in value constantly. There's always going to be buyers for them. There's always going to be this business around them as long as they maintain their value and they will continue to grow in value. We're not talking about lab diamonds. These are real diamonds there's no blood diamonds certified guaranteed all those details will be in in the trust model pretty soon but let's say the price of diamonds goes up by 
three times, 5x, 10x. Instead of your DBK going up to $3 because it tripled, or $5, 5x, $10, 10x, the amount of DBK that you will receive will be tripled. 5x, 10x, if it's pegged to the diamonds, which will go up in value, we don't care about the US dollar valuation. You're going to receive more DBK in your wallet. Paradigm shift. We're gonna get back to this, the videos over here, because this is discussing about the offices. Uh, this is the CEO with another YouTuber, and we're gonna post that into chapter six. So this is gonna be chapter two right now, the trust model and the trust model partners. We're also going to go through this section on the white paper. So we're gonna begin and we're just gonna get a few sections from the white paper and then there's gonna be a specific chapter about the white paper. Also, we are going to include pitch deck, some segments from the pitch deck as we go along. So I'll throw that in. Now that you're here, you're following along, we're gonna be going through the website, the white paper in segments. So we see six partners, the Gemological Institute of America, the Rappaport Group, Lloyds of London, Whitchester Global Trust, Brinks Global Services, and PwC. To the untrained eye, you might be wondering, well, who are these individuals? The Gemological Institute of America probably is an easy one. For every single diamond, they don't come pretty out of the ground. They're these crazy little big pieces of rocks Then people have to go through. For marketing purposes, since the average person knows this is how a diamond looks like, they have to shine it up, they have to polish it. They cut the diamond, they make it look nice and pretty. And then it really depends where the diamond came from, what kind of grade it is, how shiny is it, what kind of a shine does it have, does it have some weird color to it, how transparent it is. There's a bunch of grading factors that we're not gonna get into this video. If you're interested, you can check out Gemological Institute of America's website. It's gia.edu, and here we are under analysis and grading. Natural diamond reports and services, but they also do reports and services for natural colored diamonds, laboratory diamonds, colored stones, pearls, and random gems. We don't really care about that. It's just just diamonds over here, but they're focusing on authenticity, the color, the grading, all of that to make sure that the diamond has a wholesale value and what that wholesale value is because it's a commodity. This is different than the diamonds at, for example, Tiffany's where you're paying a three, four times premium sometimes. It's overpriced, it's gonna be difficult to sell that, but if you want to sell that, sometimes you have to take out the diamonds out of the rings and you're still gonna have to send it to the GIA to get that grade because then diamond dealers will be able to give you a price for that diamond. Of course, those diamonds usually are worth a few thousand dollars, maybe tens of thousands of dollars, but we're dealing with really, really expensive. These are the high carat diamonds that are really, really valuable, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. And what the Rappaport Group does, they help price the diamonds. So once we have that grade from GIA, then based on their size, their color, their clarity, they're priced correctly. And what's really nice is you're able to click all of these institutions over here, it redirects you to their website. Absolutely fantastic. Lloyd's of London has been around for hundreds of years. Leading insurance and reinsurance marketplace. Of course you have to insure these diamonds. What happens to them if they're lost, if they're stolen, what, for whatever reason, insurance is there to back it up. Note, I will be referring to this as Lloyd's of London. As you see, it's Willis Towers Watson, and this is just part of the syndicate. We're confident in all of these companies. Of course, all the fees are gonna be taken care of by Diamondback, all the partnerships that we've had. Now, one of the most important pieces of this whole trust model over here is the Winchester Global Trust. If you know what burning tokens are, let's say there's a finite supply of something in the cryptocurrency world. The creators of these tokens will usually have a limit to how much they burn, and once those tokens are burned, there's no way to get them back. So same thing with the diamonds. We're gonna send these diamonds to the Winchester Global Trust. They're gonna be put into this trust, and it's almost like the diamonds are tokens that are being burned. They're, they're just gone. At that point, they are locked in that trust, and they're not going to be taken out. Now what must be mentioned about Winchester Global Trust is that the token holders are able to take over the administration of not the diamonds themselves but the trust and pay the fees. So if Diamondback were to disappear for some reason, this is going a long, long time in the future. Once Bill, the CEO, once the seed group, once everything see a goodbye, if for any reason DBK were to stop functioning, the trust will still be there. The diamonds will still be in the trust. At any point in time, Diamondback does not own the diamond. They are put into the trust. Now, Winchester has been around for over 100 years. They're very reputable. We have a lot of confidence in that. Now, diamonds are pretty valuable, so that's why Brinks Global Services comes into play. They 
will take care of the safeguarding of these diamonds. And PwC is one of the big four accounting firms around the world. You also got EY, Deloitte, and KPMG. Well, everybody has probably heard of them. They will be in charge of the auditing process. Very, very trustworthy. All of these companies have their reputation, and Diamondback has partnerships with all of these organizations. The trust model involves the integration with several top-tier financial companies that give the DBK coin users a level of trust, security, safety, and transparency. So we're going further on the white paper into details, the trust model on page 13 here. Definitive agreements have been entered into with Pricewaterhouse, Coopers, Brinks Incorporated, and Willis Towers Watson, a syndicate of Lloyds of London. The DBK group has arrangements with Winchester Global Trust to ensure that a transparent, traceable, reliable, and secure trust structure can be implemented in tandem with the launch of the DBK coin. The trust model is designed so that a portion of the funds received by the sale of DBK coin will be used to cover the insurance and the trust management of the diamond cubes in perpetuity. These will be scaled as the amount of DBK coins issued increases. Diamond substantiation. Why diamonds? Trade in diamonds has gone on for centuries. While there are billions of dollars worth of rough diamonds mined every year, most of these do not meet the criteria for investment grade gemstone. They are unique assets. They will differ from one another. It's not like coal, oil, precious metals. They each have a different grade and therefore value. Diamonds just like Gold have always been considered valuable, but diamond's historical lack of fungibility has hindered the diamond industry from taking advantage of this. The pricing will be based off the Rappaport prices. It's the benchmark for pricing diamonds. Inside the diamond industry, the actual sale price of any given diamond may be at some discount from the Rappaport price. The level of discount or premium varies greatly and is influenced by many factors, including the cut, the clarity, the color, and the care, among other quality measurements. Since the Rappaport price list serves as an industry benchmark, the company will be pricing the digital asset utilizing this valuation model in order to achieve consistency in pricing. Significant changes in price that are not due to temporary market factors are reflected in the price report. The Rap Report report provides pricing values on diamonds and is published weekly. Here are historical diamond prices per care from 1960 to 2016. As you see in early 1960, it was around $2,700 per carat. Then in 1990, it grew to $13,900. Let's actually increase that. $24,500, huge jump from 2000 to 2010. 28,400, 29,650. We had that in 13 and 15 respectively. And now the most recent included in this is 30,925 in 2016. So over the past few years, based off of the historical charts, it's still growing. Public posting of the total valuation of the diamonds contained within the diamond cubes will be performed at least annually. This will be posted no less than annually beginning the first full year of DBK coin sales. Now with the blockchain ledger, how will this be used for registering these diamonds? It makes everything really transparent. The registration of assets on a blockchain through the use of diamond cube solves the fungibility issue of diamonds and opens the door to commoditization and financialization. It's really, really simple thanks to the ledger. It records all the information that it is given. You're able to see the prices, you're able to see the transactions, the fees for any DBK that is sent, and the data for the diamonds that are representing the DBK. You can go in the past, you can look through today's transactions, makes it really, really simple for the user. Now, even though the diamonds have been appraised, this is where PwC comes in. They audit it. It's that stamp of approval. Here it is. It's authenticated. The price is what has been represented. It's a Fortune 500 company. PwC will confirm that the diamonds are worth, that DBK and the appraisals actually say they are worth. Okay, so now we're on chapter three. We're going to be discussing the management team, the service providers, the advisors, and the partners. Here we see William Ng, Bill, the CEO. Ingrida, the COO, Chad Olivant, the president, and Peter Ping, the CFO. Now, these four are not the entire team for management. You're able to see more of that on the white paper. And also, the people who are on the white paper and on Diamondback on the website do not represent every single person that's working in connection with Diamondback. It's just the most important people that are on here. You're able to check out the LinkedIn's. What's also cool is you're able to check them out right here. A nice big summary of every single individual. We see the CEO. Every single link is clickable. So we just hit LinkedIn for the CEO. We can see his experience right here. 
goes back quite a bit. His education, his skills, you go through all of that information for every single person. He has experience and education in management and marketing, financial resource management, computer systems management. He's also been a licensed insurance agent for life, health, and annuities. And the thing is, all of these individuals are not part of the crypto world. They're part of the legacy world. They have real world experience in management that leads them to this project. And Chad, the president here, is the main architect of the project, sourcing the diamonds, connecting diamonds to the blockchain, making sure that everything works. He's been designing this whole project for a long time. He's got a lot of influence on this. Peter Payne, he used to work with PwC. He's based in Hong Kong. He's got a lot of connections in the world. Ingrid was a CEO of a nonprofit for 15 years. Her charitable Dalai Lama, the Oracle of Tibet, other Tibetan Lamas, and the great Mahakala have inspired her in this new challenge. So that's an interesting background. You don't really see that much. Most of these crypto projects have very early crypto investors, the programmers, the designers, and they have a few people to try and manage the project, biz development, trying to get investors, hedge fund guys, marketers. But the main focus obviously is cryptocurrency. So this project differs a little bit in that regard. Peter Payne has 35 years of international accounting, tax compliance, and corporate advisory, 12 years working with the big four, handled business investigation cases. He started Peterson Consultants Limited. Chad designed fintech products. Prior to Diamonds and Diamondback DBK, Chad has a proven track record in the prepaid debit card industry. Chad has managed, owned facilities, and dealt with this highly regulated industry. He started cultivating sources for diamonds in Guinea Conakra, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Namibia, Angola, Botswana, Zambia, and Brazil. Then when you go down to the group advisors, you see a lot of people from crypto. We have Jen, blockchain and cryptocurrency architects. We have a diamond consultant. We have Patrick Graff, who worked with payments. He was the founder of Revolution Money, developed a new technology platform that worked with uh, merchant authorization systems, credit and debit bank card issuing systems. Over the duration of his career, Patrick has been a founding member of executive teams that have raised over 1 billion US dollars over multiple strategic investment rounds. We have marketing experts and internal affairs guy, an attorney and businessman who practiced, taught, and engaged in a legal profession, business, international and domestic trade development and international affairs in multiple countries around the world, biz dev. Martin is connected with DBK for the gift card program, but we're going to learn about that in a later date. Uh, he's going to connect Macy's and other large companies with DBK. RJ has a lot of diamond experience. He's able to look at a diamond and tell you everything about it. Now, the diamond community, you have to be an expert, and it's a small, tight-knit, niche group. You have to have the connections. You have to have a lot of trust in this industry. Some of these partnerships are private. Some will be public. But it's not like they just accept anyone in there. Grant is a legal expert. So now we're going to head down to the partners. We have Alpha Point and the C groups, so you're able to click on those links and it will redirect you to their websites. Alpha Point adds DBK stablecoin availability for crypto exchange clients. Our partnership with Alpha Point integrates the DBK software exchange platform. It's gonna allow this coin to be on over 80 exchanges in 35 countries. The C group is interesting because DBK needs to grow, it needs retail. This is where the C group comes into play. Now, if you go down to the press releases, we're gonna get into more of this later on. But this specific one discusses about the C Group partnership in the private office of Sheikh Saeed bin Ahmed Al Maktoum. So if you look up this individual, the private office, he is the CEO of the Emirates Group. He has a net worth of $37.8 billion. He's the chairman of Dubai World and Noor Takafal Insurance Company. If you go to the private office website, among the fastest growing economies in the world, the UAE has positioned itself as the business hub for the entire region. The private office was established to directly invest in potential business opportunities in the region, which meets the private office investment criteria. Now this is talking about regional, this is local. There is a Dubai office. There's also a office in Europe and an office in America, in Miami. There's videos that showcase the office spaces. Diamondback announces plans on the Dubai Diamondback Stablecoin Global Initiative and a new office in Dubai to create a central hub of operations. We are pleased to partner with Diamondback as we look forward to meeting the significant market demand for stablecoin. With Dubai already being a global hub, our aim at the private office to take every step with the diamond back, build the correct foundations, realize the legalization of the coin, and promote it as it expands in the region and as it demands development and becomes more complex. I believe this will enable them to focus on their mission and make a greater impact. We're confident that this partnership generates an outstanding opportunity to introduce this to a global economy with the collective advantages of blockchain and digital currency. That's a representative for the seed group. At the bottom of the website, we have the Miami, Florida address, the Dubai address, the Estonian address, 
this. So we went through partners, we went through the advisors, the team. Here are the service providers that DBK is going to be working with. There's chain analysis over here, designs and develops software that prevents, detects and investigates cryptocurrency money laundering fraud and compliance violations. So KYC, AML, Clifford Chance, uh, that's a law firm, Dell Chain Limited, Mark ID. Procedures and agreements like the Kimberly process is in place to guarantee that diamonds are mined and shipped according to ethical standards so there's no blood diamonds. A lot of people get really upset about blood diamonds and just Diamondback does not deal with that. Chapter four, the roadmap and the advantages of the DBK stablecoin. Uh, asset portability, inflation-free, trust, transparency, blockchain, remittance, KYC, and MML. Uh, trust basically goes back to the trust model, uh, putting the diamonds into the Winchester Global Trust, uh, getting them graded through the GIA, uh, having the prices from the Rappaport Group report, uh, insurance, all of that, and especially at the end, the PwC audit to confirm that the price is what we say it is. KYC and AML, anti-money laundering. So we just comply with uh, based on regulations and best practices under various jurisdictions. DBK is the ERC-20 on the Ethereum blockchain, but it's definitely a possibility in the future that DBK will be on other blockchains. But we want it to be on the blockchain, on the ledger, because that is where it will be safe. This information, the data, everybody will be able to see it. It's quick, it's easy, transparent, secure. That is the best option. Remittance, you're able to send with little to no cost. It's very transparent because it's GIA graded. The trust because of the trust model. It is inflation free. So if the US dollar goes up in inflation and diamonds actually go up in value, then you, you, it's not pegged to the US dollar. It's substantiated off of diamonds, meaning diamonds go up in value, you get more DBK tokens. It's portable because it's compatible with various uh, blockchain platforms. Here's the roadmap, very important stuff. So if you go all the way back, yep, we're back March 2018, it was incorporated in Bermuda and uh, Binance was actually trying to be, Binance is uh, one of the most powerful exchanges and they actually bought CoinMarketCap. So everybody, even the newbies to the cryptocurrency community, if you go to CoinMarketCap, it's the largest website for cryptocurrency information. It has all the charts, the current prices of every single token, at most tokens, most tokens, the ones that weren't at least listed and registered on there, the exchanges, everything. Binance bought that out, huge, huge company. And uh, they also wanted to be in Bermuda, but uh, there was a competitor. Bermuda decided to go with them. So even though DBK was incorporated in Bermuda, now it's changed to a different location that Binance also changed to. Diamondback acquired Alpha Point exchange licenses back in March 2018. A lot happened in March. Diamondback engaged partnerships with Willis Tower Watson and the Winchester Global Trust. And Diamondback engaged Winchester Global Trust to become the trustee for where all the diamonds go. And in April with uh, Clifford Chance, uh, they're one of the top law firms for the SEC in, in very important cases. Then we have in September, the engagement with PwC. In January of 2019, Diamondback signed an agreement with AlphaPoint. It will integrate the DBK token with the exchange platform. In March of 2019, Diamondback opened an account with Brinks for the secured storage. In September 2019, Diamondback had its EU license granted. In October 2019, Diamondback has partnered with Chainalysis. This is huge for a crypto community. In November 2019, Diamondback partnered with the Seed Group. In December 2019, reaffirmed Estonia EU license to provide financial services and exchange virtual currency versus fiat currency. This is very, very big. Without it in the European Union, it is very difficult to exchange cryptocurrencies for fiat, fiat for cryptocurrencies, and vice versa. That's why a lot of companies were getting out of Germany and other EU members. Even though there was a lot of money, they just didn't have the licenses. The laws changed. It wasn't always like that, but the world is changing, and especially for cryptocurrency laws. So you have to make sure if a license is needed, you got to get that license. Q1 of 2020, Diamondback initiated a pending to be announced partnership involving credit and debit cards, digital currency, and private settlement services. Q2, Diamondback began filing multiple patents. Q3, Diamondback is projected to begin sales for the first time on a public exchange. And Q4, estimated worldwide launch of DBK coin sales and ecosystem proprietary peer-to-peer business-to-business payment network. 
So we're not going to be going through the entire white paper. If you want, you can read that for yourself. There's 44 pages. Most of it is content, but we're going to be skipping over here to, to the fundamental analysis. There we go. It starts on page 21. Currency market primer. Currency markets do not set exchange rates between trading pair. In theory, this means that currencies are free to fluctuate. Nevertheless, this was not always the case. For example, exchange rates were fixed at a monetary conference called Bretton Woods in 1940. 44 based upon a decreed valuation to the price of gold so dollars were backed by gold then that system ended in 1971 it allowed for a one percent variance this accord led to the formation of institutions to administer the process which continues today in the form of the international monetary fund and the world bank in 1971 the u.s effectively ended the system by decoupling the u.s from gold reserves and allowing for this free floating exchange this act followed quickly by the 1973 agreement between the u.s government and saudi arabia to price all oil sales and u.s dollar denominated contracts took the world's reserve currency status to entirely new levels best described as exorbitant privilege in the past foreign exchange trading called forex was settled largely through banks and large traders for Forex markets were off limits to all but a few select corporations and the top high net worth individuals. Today, Forex markets handle US $5 trillion per day and are open to everyone. Although when speaking about foreign currency exchanges, we refer to a marketplace, the reality is that there is no single exchange. The market is very fragmented as it is made up of sovereign banks, large corporate banks, Forex trading companies, and large corporations. There's precious little room for arbitrage between exchanges. Published Forex rates are more or less arbitrary arbitrary points in time. Trades are based upon a single rate where some unit of X currency is traded for some unit of Y currency plus a spread placed by the exchange. The next trade is usually some plus or minus delta of P of those respective currencies. Published averages are sometimes calculated off of just a few large trades. When it comes to actual money exchanges, each organization sets its own rate. For example, Visa and MasterCard use a non-disclosed Forex rate that is not discoverable and then on top of that they charge a 1% to 3% fee for each transaction. So if you go around the world, you use your card, somewhere abroad you're going to get slapped with a nice fee whether you use that at a grocery store or at the atm the fees will differ and also they will differ which country you're in this may be the interbank rate plus a set delta and then the added percentage that the consumer sees banks can sometimes go as high as four to six percent above the interbank rate along with a fixed fee based on the amount of currency exchange so it can really really get troublesome if you go abroad for a week and you make 100 purchases 100 transactions each one of those transactions will be hit by at least two fees a fixed fee and the conversion fee and depending on how he got that money money where it was uh, atm fee where you sent that money and there's a fee for sending the bank makes their money off of you every single transaction you might look at the end of the week and whoa there's a few hundred dollars in fees when it comes to remittances these rates are usually not even published the conversion rate is just calculated and provided and the high fees are added on top of that the company has received expressions of interest from many emergency market principles to facilitate remittance using dbk coin and for good reason the interbank rate. The interbank rate is used between large banks for executing currency swaps. The rate is calculated as a midpoint between buy and sell rates or the bid ask spread. These bid ask spreads are set by brokers based on an order book of trade. The reality is that exchange rates are floating and are unstable and arbitrarily set at the retail level. Banks and other financial institutions set their own forex rates. This is similar to when banks colluded to calculate the LIBOR rate, ostensibly based upon the cost of the money that they borrow among themselves. Many other interest rates are based off of this single metric. This includes the $350 trillion derivative market. Following the Liber scandal of 2012, wherein it was revealed the rate has been manipulated for three decades, the rate's current neutrality can also be reasonably questioned. Assuming it's no longer manipulated, then the rate becomes what the banks agreed to charge each other. These rates are subject to manipulation. That's huge right there. All of this impacts the value of a currency. No currency today has an inherent value in and of itself. Currency valuations are based on the confidence placed in them by the users of the currency. As a case in point, zero or negative interest rate policies are in place to force spending and consumption, and zero and negative interest have the added consequence of robbing savers of their abilities to build wealth. You're losing your money right there. This has resulted in a massive move into equity markets in search of yield over the last two decades. Uh, here's exchange rate fluctuations. 
A look at 10-year price movements in the top currencies versus the U.S. Exchange rates fluctuate by the minute. Usually in the course of any 24-hour period, there can be 100 pip swings. A look at 10-year price movements in the top currencies versus the U.S. dollar is telling. So we got GBP against U.S. dollar, $1.50 in 2009 to 2018, a spot price of 157 and the spot price in 2018 differing to 135 the euro to USD, 126 between 150, 139, 120, yen, 0 0.0102, 0 0.0107, 0 0.0091, Swiss francs, 104, 92, 103, and inflation, everybody's favorite topic. Every currency has its own internal inflation rate. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Indexes, the prices in 2018 are 17.53% higher than in 2009. So if you had let's say 100 US dollars in 2009, in 2018, you lost 17.53%, 17.5% of that purchasing power. So whatever you were purchasing, whether it was a car or a house, if those things didn't go up in value, which cars probably went also down in value, you're losing money. If you're buying milk back in 2009 and you're buying milk back in 2018, you get completely different rates. You're buying less milk, you're buying less groceries, you're buying less whatever it is. The average inflation rate is 2.7%. However, this year, 2020, uh, the Federal Reserve has announced that most likely it's going to be 4%. So usually it's 2 to 3%. Some analysts actually suggest that it's over that, uh, that it's not what the government is saying, but we're not going to get into that. So let's just trust the government here where it's 2% average, 2.7% here, and then it just suddenly goes up to 4% one year. That's an uncomfortable position because your dollars are losing their value right there. When inflation rates are low, the costs are effectively hidden. In the US, for example, inflation is not a topic of conversation. There's macroeconomic issues with this. People around the world face daily challenges. The global reach of the internet, cellular networks, and smartphones now provide people worldwide with the potential to access the financial system in new ways. However, there's huge fees for this. Approximately 2 billion people are excluded from all of this. What's noteworthy is that these same excluded individuals send and receive around $600 billion in annual remittances. Most people have no alternatives to using their local fiat currency, even within the financial system. The residents of these countries, approximately 2 billion people, use currencies that lost more than 10% of their value against the US dollar in 2018. This is very destructive to individuals and households long term. You're not able to build your wealth. Currencies with a 10% loss versus the US dollar. Venezuela, we were discussing about that. Huge hyperinflation, 99.99 plus percent. Sudan, 61%. Argentina, 50.5%. Turkey, 44%. Brazil, nearly 21%. We have South Africa approaching 16%. Namibia, 16%. Almost Russia, 15.3%. Sweden, 10.3%. A lot of people would be actually surprised, but hey, there we go. India, 10%. You can see it on the map over here. So what is the design philosophy of the Diamondback design? It's an ERC-20 currently. However, it will probably be available on different blockchains as discussed earlier in this video. We're blockchain agnostic and the valuation of the DBK coin can be placed on any viable blockchain. The cross-chain valuation is simple and easy to implement as it is nothing more than an accounting function. No matter what blockchain the DBK coins are listed on, the purchaser of a DBK coin will have confidence that the values remain the same. The cost of the DBK will always be one dollar one us dollar however coins will be added to offset any inflation that the us dollar receives for any users that opt in for that and there's going to be times when you're able to purchase more than one dbk token per usd of value paid attention to the asterisks in this white paper so diamondback is a payment stable coin dbk coins do not change one advantage of owning diamondback is the ability to use dbks for worldwide commerce and as a stable coin for crypto trading the main reason non-fiat digital currency is not widely used for currency today is because the price fluctuates. So it makes it impossible to calculate consistent margin. If you see the words asset backed, pegged, benchmarked, or one-to-one -one ratio, etc., in any diamond back material, it is important to remember that marketing material is updated often. Old marketing materials could pertain to old variations of the business model. And while we're in the process of patenting our business model and other components of the diamond back business, please know what asset backed, pegged, benchmarked, one-to-one -one ratio, etc., simply means in regards to diamond back is for every one US dollar received for DBKs, one US dollar equivalent of wholesale diamond values placed in the third party diamond trust, which is referred to the diamond trust or the diamond trust reserve. Furthermore, Diamondback will use its in process patent to create the diamond cubes, which is secure and validates the assets on the blockchain for all to see. Retail appraisal of diamond value can easily equate to 300 plus percent of the wholesale values. There's no intent or guarantee we will buy your one DBK for one US dollar. There's also no intent or guarantee we will not as we build up liquidity over time. 
We do not have a complicated formula to maintain a peg or just a current prices or market conditions to maintain certain parameters. Pegging, benchmarking, backing, substantiating, etc. should be viewed to mean simply for every single US dollar that DBK tokens bring in, one US dollar equivalent of wholesale value of high quality ultra rare diamond is placed in the diamond trust reserve. We believe that providing clarity and transparency as well as maintaining an eloquent simplicity is why Diamondback will succeed in ways no other company has thus far. We must be crystal clear on this issue. We don't want anyone to be misled and sometimes marketing materials are made and distributed without permission. While we do our best to limit this as any company that has a referral program can, there will always be unscrupulous promoters and that is the last thing we want to have happen. This document as well as the token purchase agreement, terms and conditions and other disclaimers also included in the white paper supersede any marketing material, white paper, video, website, etc. While you hold DBK coins and participate in the Diamondback Club, you may earn rewards. These rewards are added to your wallet in the form of additional DBK coins. US dollar or regional fiat currency. Rewards are added to Diamondback Club members' wallets periodically as determined by market factors and activity. This is not to be confused with staking or proof of stake model. There are no specific incentives or rewards promised for locking up coins for any period of time in the Diamondback Club. Coin bonuses are not to be viewed as an investment return that is predicated on the performance of assets or management, but rather a cool new way to participate in the evolution of digital currency. Alternative payment solutions in the Diamondback Club. The Diamondback Club is a private membership group of individuals, merchants, and companies that agree to use DBKs as a payment stablecoin for the purchase or sale of goods and services between one another. By participating in the club's activities, you'll earn rewards and coins will be added to your wallets. So there's quite a bit to go through here. I do not want to make this video too long. So this is an important section that I believe you should go through. Also the risks. Uh, last thing I'll read here, each DBK coin is always priced at one US dollar. However, there are programs and specials that may enable purchasers to get more than one DBK per US dollar. There's also rewards and incentives for referrals and exchange bonuses, as well as incentives for using the coins for commerce. You should carefully consider all of the risks. That's why you should definitely go through all of this. There's wallet risks, there's mining attacks, software weaknesses, cyber crime, protocol breakdown, illegal transaction risks, but this goes for any cryptocurrency. Real limited transactability, uh, cryptocurrency adaption risk, blockchain technology adaption risk, a nascent market, loss of purchase price, wallet risk. There's quite a few risks, so go through that. We're trying to be upfront and honest here. Again, this goes for any cryptocurrency, really. Welcome to chapter six. So we're going to be discussing about the news, the PR, social media, and the photo gallery so there is a gallery section you're able to go through and uh oh, it looks like this is going to have to be fixed a little bit here there's a lot of photos going on so we can go through uh, this might be just due to my screen probably going to be fine on yours here's the team in amsterdam here's some diamond cutters here's bill with diamond cutters here there are pwc alpha point meeting in dubai at a conference, probably another conference over here. Yep, a blockchain conference going through all this. World Blockchain Summit, there's Will. Doing some interviews, here's a presentation. So as you go through these photos, it kind of gives you a sense that, hey, this is a real company. These people actually exist, they have a history, they're going around, they're meeting these partners, these advisors, they're working with people. These are, uh, looks like the diamonds, they're, they're still being worked on, they're not cut. This is part of the process meeting with, with the C group over here. More conference stuff. So yeah, you're able to go through the videos, the photos. It gives you a sense, all right, this is, these people are who they say they are. Let's go back to the website. And if we go down to the bottom, some of these links might be older. Some of the information might have changed. For example, these videos, here's uh, with the C group. Uh, this is an interview for a YouTuber. Some of the information might have been changed from that. It provides a lot of information. This is one of the offices, uh, Brickell Avenue. So if you've ever been to Florida, you understand that Brickell, it's a pretty cool place. Yeah, this is just exploring the offices here. Diamondback partnership with Seed Group Dubai office. There's gonna be an interview. Here are the news and press releases. So if you go to show more, Alpha Point, we had the Seed Group. We've had stuff from conferences, from summits. There's gonna be more articles and PR that's gonna be written about. It's just starting. The social media aspect is also beginning as well that's going to be growing quite a bit you're able to explore all of this see what's happened as seen on forex tv street insider business insider you're able to click the links diamondback group announces future token launch it's part of the pr over here january 17th here is the diamondback instagram page here's the diamondback link tree so we have a twitter the telegram channel there's a discord the discord is actually going to become very very important in the future so here's the twitter so like i said it's growing there's going to be a youtube channel 
Uh, the Telegram, it's pretty new. Not a lot of stuff has been on there, not a lot of updates. So when it, I guess when it's rebranded, when it goes back into action, there's gonna be a lot more members. So we've actually lost some members over here. But the Discord is gonna be extremely, extremely important. There's gonna be announcements. You're able to chat with other users. There's gonna be an affiliate program. We're not gonna discuss about that today. Uh, Diamond Burn, the credit and debit card option, the exchanges that it's on. There's worldwide chats, information why Diamonds, Blood Diamonds. The first question a lot of people ask is, what about Blood Diamonds? We get it. You saw Leonardo DiCaprio movie one time. You hate diamonds in general. Well, whether you love them or hate them, Diamondback is great for you because what Diamondback mainly does is remove supply from the world's finest diamonds and locks them in audited vaults. Blood Diamonds are a non-issue. All our diamonds have Kimberly certificates that have been underdone the high scrutiny possible that they come from fair trading sources. Trillion dollar market cap, mass adoption, partnerships, Axion, Trust Swap, Uptrend. So there's a lot of stuff that is going to be growing in the future. Why nobody can copy us, the 50 and 100 year plan, locked liquidity, the corporate structure. So this will become the most important aspects, besides probably the YouTube channel, because that will have a lot of interviews. That's gonna have a lot of information on there. Uh, the interviews on other YouTube channels as well. Diamondback is very open to marketing and working in collaboration with other crypto YouTubers and crypto influencers from all the platforms. And really, I mean, we're, we're open to any platform just so it's easy easy for the viewers. Some people prefer Instagram, some people prefer YouTube, some people prefer podcasts, some people prefer this or that. We're still starting out with that. What we wanted to focus on first, I'm in back, is the actual business, not the social media, not the marketing, not getting users, because once the business is in place, once the partnerships and the advisors and the employees and everything is already working and has been going on for quite some time. Once the groundwork has been built out, the base has a solid foundation underneath it, then you're able to just scale up. Everything's going to be scaled up and really quickly invest some money into marketing, try to get word of mouth, and it's going to grow from there. So we made it to the epilogue and we're going to discuss about merch, but that is at the very, very end. When you go to the website and you hit purchase with credit card, as promised at the very beginning, uh, we're going to discuss about this, the starter pack. You get free DBK with your education package. Extra bonuses, you'll receive three digital currency reports for a limited time and equal amount in DBKs as the total cost of your product. Uh, there's gonna be extra information and educational content coming up with extra, with free updates. This package covers almost every avenue for investment in today's economy. One of the biggest challenges in today's marketplace is information overload. There's a ton of courses out there, a lot of them good, some not so good. There are even courses on how to make courses. This space is very lucrative, but it's just a confusion. It's it's crazy, it's too much. A lot of people are turned away from courses. So that's why we're working on trying to create some amazing courses for the DBK enthusiasts out there and future social experiment adventurers trying to discover what this is. We wanna educate you guys. So it's not just about cryptocurrency, but it's about other stuff that's going on in the world, as long as it's financial related. So it's not just like anything. This is why we're offering a free bonus package. In times of crisis, people are wanting to get education, learn how to make money in new ways, but also are reluctant to let go of their hard earned cash. That's why if you spend 100, 500, 1000, any amount of money on our training, we will provide the corresponding amount of DDKs. For example, one quantity starts you off with $50. Let's say you want to buy uh, 10 times that. So that's going to be $500. And you're going to get $500 worth of DDK stable coin with you. You can go up to 20. That's going to be $1,000 worth of DDK. You're able to send it to other people for a limited time. Only use the private key you receive in your purchase. If you buy four packages, you can share three with friends if you choose to. Whether you're new to this, topic. We're well studied in this. This ebook will help you. There's going to be more courses coming out, video courses. Quick disclaimer, we're not financial advisors and do not give financial advice. We just access that is trying to help you save some money and time over here. It can be very confusing. So even if you don't really care about the education aspect, but you just don't want to pay in cryptocurrency, this is a nice little way to purchase. You get a free treat with that. And later on, if you want some merch, I'm going to be wearing it for my YouTube channel. There's hoodies, t-shirts, links will be in the description below. But that is that for the educational starter pack so we have finished officially this long video if you're unable to go through it there's multiple chapters and it will be linked in various places nice and easy for you guys so so we are currently in the pitch deck uh, we have to read the disclaimer here so we're going to speed that up but please read this entire section and do not take any actions until you finish it so why was Diamondback created? Well, there's a global use case. There's 1.7 billion adults currently without financial services. Millions of people pay exorbitant fees to send funds across borders. And there's currently two financial paradigms, government issued US dollar, uh, Euro, GBP, yen, all that, digital currency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, 
thousands of cryptocurrencies. So with the government fiat currency, currently there is an increasing trend to vilify fractional reserve banking practices and the centralization of power and wealth within the existing system. There's a five-year fall. Here we have the Argentinian peso, 546.7%. Turkish Lira, 221%, Russian Ruble, 117.4%, Brazilian Real, 84%, South African Rand, 51%, Mexican Peso, 47%, Indonesian Rupiah, US Dollar, 18% over the past five years. Then we have the Chinese Yuan, Singapore Dollar. Without fractional reserve banking, though, many people feel that it would have been impossible to build the infrastructure that industrialized countries enjoy today. Diamond Back does not aim to replace, but instead augment the current financial tools that people have access to. Diamond Back can provide a safe haven for tumultuous currencies and economies we have diamonds we already went through this chart they're going up from 1960 to 2016 and the purchasing power of the u.s dollar in 1913 the federal reserve was created it was one dollar with this is just for the purchasing power here and in 2013 100 years later we're at five five cents so that is it's just phenomenal it's absurd the cryptocurrency paradigm bitcoin blockchain technology is amazing the price is too volatile though and it's too volatile for businesses it scares away a lot of people we love bitcoin but it's not a viable option for everyone the ICO format for fundraising is mainly defunct. There was a lot of scams. There was a lot of regulation. Most of the adult people want the potential upside of Bitcoin, but without the volatility. They want stability. They want something that will remain the same value. Most of the alternative coin projects will fail because of their inability to become compliant with governments. So even though they don't care about that right now, it will bite them back or their lack of ability to continuously raise funds. And most of these projects will fail eventually. Diamondback's mission statement, our mission is to create the bridge between digital and fiat currency, a token that has real world value that's available globally in digital and physical marketplaces for everyone's use, regardless of socioeconomic status. The trust model we went through, certified conflict-free, the Kimberly process standards, which are put in place, everyone trusts Kimberly. We have storage and insurance and taxes and compliance, top five worldwide securities law firm, Clifford Chance. There's KYC, AML, ATF, and KYT, know your transaction, know your customer, chain analysis, and comply advantage. Diamondbacks go to market strategy, grassroots, adoption through assimilation. Diamondbacks philosophy, adoption through assimilation, creates a means to minimize the education process by a grassroots referral program. Diamondback's formal agreement with a UK group of over 40,000 members, as well as an informal agreement with several others, totaling over 500,000 members in 125 countries. These people will be the first adopters of DBK coins as a store of value, unit of account, medium of exchange, and for commerce. The time is right because inflation is growing. This year is pretty crazy with the pandemic, and diamonds are growing in value as well. Diamondback, everyone, everywhere, every day. So that is that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions please remember you are able to check out the telegram and the discord group write an email communicate by twitter there's plenty of ways you're able to get that information the last and most important aspect of this entire project is that it's a social experiment if you're not ready for it that's okay this company has already invested millions of dollars into this project diamondback is not trying to get rich off of a few crypto enthusiasts buying dbk here and there we're not looking for individuals that are in tough financial positions this is the mentality that you should take for any cryptocurrency, any digital currency out there. If you're interested in it, do your proper research always. Always keep that thought in the back of your mind that you could lose your money. If you're not prepared to lose even a portion of your money, you're able to lose it in anything. Stock market goes down a few percent, people freak out. If you're one of those individuals, this is not for you. But if you did your research, you don't get too emotional, you throw in an amount that's comfortable for you, then this is worth looking into. But even if you just want to watch from the sidelines, that's okay too. Keep an eye out for more educational content. There's going to be social media updates, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.